this is the bit.ly link of the board today. Um, hopefully everyone can manage to get on there. If you can't use the board, just let me know. And what we'll do is we'll go through, um, if you just keep notes on pencil and piece of paper, um, and then we can add your feedback in as we go through. So we're going to do a very quick icebreaker. Today we're going to do everybody. So what we're going to do is we, we are going to do a, a quick summary of part one. Um, and then we're going to talk about what I was thinking of doing a plan for today and where I'm trying to 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 head us. And I'm one of the good things of this, if you weren't here for the first kind of 10 minutes, chatting with Tim and everybody about how some of this has come about has actually been really good because it's given me a little bit of insight as to um, how we got to where we are. Um, so uh, if you just go to number two, the summary of part one. I didn't think that the status of a bus stop would be as quite as contentious as it has been. And one of the things I've realised is that um, there are a number of fields and some people can use them, some people can't, uh, which is quite dependent on the software that people are using. Um, everyone's using things quite differently, um, the same fields and the same options within those fields to to sometimes represent different things. And this must be really difficult for bus operators and downstream consumers because it's it's a lack of consistency, not within a local authority, but between local authorities and across the whole national things. Um, and archived is underutilized. And that's simply because I'm also aware that our, it was it's only DFT who apparently could archive and we had no, uh, the people I spoke with were, was like, yeah, there might be a stored procedure called that, but we've never, we haven't run it for quite a while. So just making you aware that there's a, there's been a little bit of a, um, what am I, what's the word I'm trying to use? There's been a little bit of a thing there. Um, and that's something that we also want to understand is why archived was so central? What was the purpose it was trying to ful to fulfil? So that's some of the things that I want us to stop and think about, and I'm going to go and do a lot more thinking. So the plan for today. Does that make sense of part one, by the way? For those who came along to part one, I mean, literally, there was so little agreement. I was shocked. There was a lot of agreement that there needs to be some way of indicating what what state a bus stop is in, but there was so little agreement as to what it looked like as a digital double. So um, this is kind of talking about there's a physical bus stop and there's a digital representation of the bus stop that has to happen in NAPTAN. And we know the stages of a physical bus stop. We can all kind of go and see that. How those are represented in NAPTAN is a lot more different. And that's the bit that I'm talking about. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah. Fantastic. So quick plan. I want us to talk about where we want to get to. I want us, we've got a, a reasonable mix of people here. Um, and I think we can get some idea of where of where this might go. And we can then start to socialise that wider and kind of talk to people about what this might mean. We might need a few plate people to go and make some changes, but this will be a very slow change. We're not going to push this overnight. Um, and we'll also see what we can do in the back end to help this, what sort of business rules might be run, what sort of things we can do to make this guidance really obvious for both the data producers and the data consumers. So moving on to number three, that was the big preamble. We want to describe an agreed way using the fields and options we have the life cycle of a public transport stop. Now I'm calling it a public transport stop because we need to sort out the centrally managed stops, all the ferries, um, undergrounds, metros, trams, rail stations, etc. So we need to sort those out as well. Um, so we want the same statuses to mean kind of the same thing for everything. Now we're going to focus on bus stops because that's what most of us do, um, but we're going to take those same principles. So what I've got here is I've got an exercise where I'd like us to go and have a look and just talk through the constraints. Now I've put up two constraints. There's no new fields and there's no new options within fields. 
So this is trying to minimize the amount of change, even if we do this. So it's trying to it's trying to minimize it around. So I'm just trying to put up the fields that we have and the options within those fields. Um, so the fields we have, for example, we've got for modification. We've got the options of new, revise, delete and archive. Now I want to quickly ask everybody who produces data, do those make sense for the modification of a stop point? Is there anything that we think yeah. might be missing? I know we have a constraint of not creating new fields, but if there's something that somebody says, actually, this is really, really missing, um, we want to under, we want to um, change that. Let's go through. Di. Will, will there be a date on here somewhere? Uh, yes. Uh, um, after the modification, so this is in the XML. It's got a, it's got a, a it's got a modification. Then it's got a create a date and a modification date. And 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 a revision number as well. So this allows us a little bit of traceability within the XML data. Um, so I think this is a relatively uncontentious one, but I'm going to be quite um, part of getting this voting. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we need start voting session. So this is round one. Round one modification. Um, there's just one vote per person. Um, just let us know if you if you can use these or if your system can't use these. And what we're just trying to find out, especially when we get to some of the other weird pieces is whether or not it's a systems flaw or it's a knowledge flaw. So we have some local authorities that aren't using some of these fields and we're just trying to figure out very broadly if this is the if there's one system that doesn't allow this or if it's about knowledge about this at all. Uh, so I need to vote. I'm just going to vote there. So if you just let us know, Tim, if you just want to click on the voting options, because I think uh, unless you uh, want to represent any of the people that you work with. No, I think <laughs> too complicated Andy. if I get involved in this. <laughs> and um, yeah, can I? We I can use all those. I've ticked the box. I can use these, but one of them I have yeah. to ask DFT for to allow me to use it. The archived option allows me to delete the stop off my local database. So I have to ask you to set it to archive so that I can delete the stop. Does that make sense? That's why I've, I've yeah. ticked that, although I can't set it as archived in my in my data. Although okay. actually coming from the last meeting, I could now as long as I then delete it. Um, but archived are frozen at the moment. If that's, is that correct? Yeah. So yeah. that's that's one of the things that I want to have a discussion is um and maybe th this is almost the point to ask it. No, actually, I will we'll, we'll keep archived for for just a tiny little bit later. But I know that there was a thing that DFT had to control it, and I don't. I think there was a technical limitation rather than a process limitation and I want to figure out if we can change that. I want to figure out how we would change that and if because that feels like we've been um, creating a problem that shouldn't shouldn't have been created in the first place. So I can see that 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 people can use these. Um, so modification of a stop point is quite an easy one. The next one is there's a status of a stop point. Now this is used by most people as far as we can tell. So there's a status of a stop point um, or a stop here or anything, but we're focusing on a stop point which is active. There's one called pending and there's one called inactive. Have we all heard of these and do, uh, die and Andy, especially, do you use these? Uh, yes, I do. 
and yes, I do. Yes, <laughs> so you do. Happy. Yes, you do. Oh, fantastic! This, this, this is <laughs> this is going to be this is going to be a relatively short 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 <laughs> session by the sounds of it. <laughs> At least this bit. Um, before I do, Roger and um, and Chris, are you aware of these statuses and do you use them as well? Uh, yes, we do. Well, I do certainly. Can't speak for Chris. Um, I'm not sure in the latest system. Andy, you can help out here. Um, I'm not sure about the yeah. inactive. I'm sure it should be possible to use it. It used to be on my old software, but I'm not so sure on the Diva. Yeah, in Diva we have them as as active and deleted. Yeah. Ah. So an inactive stop has got the status of deleted. Ah. So in Diva, this is deleted. Do you have pending as well? I'm not sure I've I seen it. Use... No, I'm just going to get in and have a look. I don't know if, if we do. I think the answer is if we do. We don't I have don't, any. I don't use it. <laughs> yeah, no one uses it if we do. I, I, I know we only have the two sets. Uh, can I just say I um, accidentally clicked out of the board um, trying to log into my Naptan software for the first vote. And when ah. I tried to come back in, I was unable to get in because the vote was going. Um, ah. I, I can access all of those statuses in the first column. Thank you, Roger. Um, apart that, from that's obviously, great, no. yeah, archive. Archived, yeah. Yeah, I've... Um, So, uh, and uh, Aidan, I know that Omni Omnibus is used by a few people. Do you do you know which of these that people can use? In fact, I'm not going to even bother with voting on these because I think it's actually better discussing those bits. I was planning this for my usual 50 people. Um, I didn't I didn't realise I was going to have a handful of people, so I'll just pivot a little bit, and we won't do quite so many votes. We'll do a lot more discussion. Uh, for me, um, off the top of my head, no, uh, I, I'm not sure, but I'm going to go in check after this. Okay, done. cool. We do in Diva. We have a we have a status of planned, which would you have a status? I would have to do some planned. Now that planned may come out in the trans in the Naptan export as pending. I would need to do some testing on that. Hmm. Ah, so that's really interesting. Might show as show as pending in export. Okay, so so the status of the stop point. E oh, die. Sorry, I inter I I I didn't see your hand up. That's all right. Um, in Rootwise, which was the precursor to what we have, it was deleted rather than inactive. But in Pays Novus, it's inactive. It was something I had to get used to when I swap systems. So, and 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 what are you in? You, you, you're in Novus. Novus, yeah. Novus, now inactive. Okay, so 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 Diva might be showing as um, inactive when exported. That's interesting that 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 Diva has changed slightly the label of the labels of this in the front end, but is possibly not showing that in the back end. Um, so just yeah. we might just want to double check with them. Um, why? Um, probably get those labels changed if needed, so it's all the same. Yeah. Make more sense. Yeah. Yeah, because it's it's trying it's allowing people to see what data they're producing, and if we show the data that it's got this on, and yet in your data in your interface it's showing something else, I I worry that that gets a little bit what's what quite what's going on for people. Mm. Um, and then the last one is stop availability, which I don't. Oh, sorry, Tim. Yeah, I was just going to say you probably find that the names come from um, European requirements because 
Diva was originally developed for a uh, German market. Okay. Um, and yeah, I'm just but... looking at the VDV yeah, the, the... expectations. Yeah, the, the actual fields are Naptan. It's a Naptan tab, so they're only Naptan specific options. Um, so they should be just relevant to Naptan. Okay, so that's a that's an interesting thing that we might want to just go and investigate. We've not got anyone who's using Mints here. The 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 other big one. I know that there's the two big ones, uh, or bigger ones, I should say. Sorry, I'm the bus and everyone else. Um, two of the bigger ones that are used um, internationally, and then the, just trying to catch it, up isn't with Diva where the meant, different ones are. I'm sure, I Have thought I? Diva Diva, was sorry. Yes, Diva is meant. Diva is meant. Trapeze is the other one. I'll Trapeze is Novus. Yeah. Ah, Diva equals meant. Trapeze equals. Peas equals novus. Um, the number of times I've probably got this back to front all and all over the place because of um, the, the names change where we're still at the stage of trying to get access to the different software for DFT. So we can at least see what people are using and we can see what some of those interactions are and build that up. That's uh, That's been a journey. Andy. You had Sorry, a question or are, are we ready to move on? No. No, you carry on. Ah, fantastic. So the next one is stop availability. So um, this is the field that I found that I think it's, it seems to be there from 2.1, but Tim will possibly correct me. And this allows you to say between these dates, the stop is not available. Um, and we've got three there, active, suspended, and transferred. Um, and I wondered if people have seen these and are using these. I know this is a very partially used. It's also not in the CSV output. So that is one of the things that I'm also thinking about as to whether this is something that needs to go in the CSV file to make it easier for people to humanly read as well as the XML computerly read um, this quite important piece of data. Um, is anyone using this? I don't think I've got the option to put dates on. I think I would just manually mark it as inactive or pending for the period and then go back and make it active again at the end of the period. But we'd really only do that for um, long term suspensions. We have the capability, but uh, we don't use it. Again, we, we have no particular use case for it. We have valid, we can enter valid dates into Diva, but as far mm -hmm. as I'm aware, they're never used. I, I, and I don't know if they're, out, if they're yeah. output. No, I don't think they're output into the Naptan export anyway. And Tim, um, the React software supports them, um, and um, Transonic, the old Transonic software, um, and a lot of those early um, products did use them. Um, Staffordshire still use it. Manchester use React, and I know mm -hmm. that some of the um custom software that um SIPT and um I think the Wicker software which is um also used by um Hertfordshire um supports it as well. Okay. Oh wow. That's that's really good to know. So we've got a we've no, got none of them are mainstream though. That's the thing. I was, <laughs> was going to say we've got we've almost got the alternative crew 
using stop availability and the mainstream not, which is almost back to front to what I would have expected. So this might become something where we need to make some requests of the larger mainstream software to look at if this is possible to use, but this will go through the next piece. Di. I've just found it. <laughs> Ah, you just oh, fantastic! I love the fact I love the fact that this this conversation is prompting everyone to kind of go and have a look and see and see where things are. Um, so whether it works or not, I have no idea. But uh, yeah, apparently <laughs> where you put it. <laughs> um, so what might become interesting is, um, and I'm more than happy to do some testing and, um have some one-to-one -one conversations, look through your software and look through the export and see if this comes through, whether it will come into NAPTAN because we can play around a little bit on, on the test systems. Um, and when I say me, possibly not actually me, one of the team, um, but sit, uh, who, who can it, who is actually competent on software, um, to kind of have a look and see how some of this data comes across. Tim. Um, transferred is is really interesting actually when you consider how it could be used in the context of um, disruptions and things like that mm -hmm. because when you transfer you can specify where that activity at that bus stop is transferred to so yeah. the, the whole concept of this you know is you've got a bus stop that's out of use for a period of time um, because of roadworks or it's only active for three or four weeks of the year because of some county show or or something like that but the transferred is you spe then specify what bus stop the activity is transferred to so for uh, if, if anybody actually ever used that from a disruption point of view it's really useful but i don't know of any scheduling systems that support it and I think that's something where Aiden might be really, really um, interesting. And, and I don't expect you to know the stuff off the top of your head, Aiden. We might need to come and again sit down and do some some working with you and some thinking about this as to which of these fields your system can read as well as export, because you're on both sides of this divide. Yeah, indeed. I was just I was just looking in our software there, but I, I couldn't see it. But um... That doesn't mean it's not there. Mm. And I get the sense that also this is possibly one of those fields that's um, underloved because I found it and I thought, oh, this is actually going to be quite useful. So um, I'm we're rocketing through this um, as expected because there's, there's a, a, a bit less of us. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the life cycle of a bus stop, make sure that I've got the physical reality kind of close and this is based on a lot of the conversations we've been having all the way through um, then I want to talk about what that digital double will look like so what I'm trying to think about is I've got some ideas of what a digital um, version of this should look like what it should say at various points but I want to get your input on it to say actually at this point it should be this status, it should be this stop availability, it should be this modification and whether the ECTO code should be new, should be reused or, or whatever. But let's start off with the physical reality. So a bus stop starts as a twinkle in a planner's eye. Essentially somebody somewhere says be nice to have a bus stop here, whether it's a new town, um, Let's actually take it, so we took it as there's a suburban street and uh, housing has opened up in the area and we've everyone's decided actually this would be a good spot for a new bus stop because this new housing area, it's not served by any convenient bus stops. Does that sound a reasonable, realistic kind of scenario that would happen? And die. Roger and Chris, you're, you're possibly the people to know how realistic that scenario might be. It, it's a small something that would be tied in with the uh, building uh, approval for the development that the developers have got to supply public transport, access to public transport, which at its bare minimum includes a bus stop. And But if there isn't a bus service going past there anyway, it might actually include 
funding of, for a bus service for a certain period. But yeah, I mean, boils down to yes, there's a, a request for a bus stop or a desire for a bus stop, however it's come, wherever it comes from. Cool. But that's a that's a nice little nuance that I think is important to put in there because this is in that kind of planning planning stage of the entire development. Um, so in the next one, I know that there's I, I know that we talked about there's a little bit people like bus stops that just don't like them outside their houses. Um, so but there's also the highways consultation of is this the right place for a bus stop in terms of traffic, in terms of flow, other intersections, can the bus stop safely, all of those considerations. So that seems like it feels like the next step. So there's kind of we know that we need something in this area this is kind of planning exactly where it's going to be. Then we determine exactly where the location is and we wait on works because there's got to be something physical. Um, works are underway, oh. aka it's going to be very soon that, that, that there's a live bus stop. Work completed, we 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 have a stop and those um, in Buckinghamshire will recognise my favourite Ashley Green bus stop that I use a lot. Um, it's in a I've called it I've called it suburban. It's kind of that suburban residential thing. And no, this is not a perfect bus stop. It doesn't have signage on it for all of those keen, keen eyed people to note. Um, so at this point, we've got a bus stop and buses can and buses can route past there. We can run bus routes and bus services. Does that make sense? Have I skipped any big steps in this little kind of plan out of a, of the life cycle of a bus stop? Uh, bus operators have to agree to serve it. Ah, yes. Even if it's on an existing bus route, they don't necessarily have to agree to serve it if they didn't agree in the first place that that was the location or an additional stop that they wanted on the services going past. So um, this so is normally covered. Where would covered. that fit in? Oh. Sorry. I was where would that say... fit in, Di? Yeah. <laughs> And then you, so I'll, I'll finish asking my question, Chris, and then I'll come back to you. So, Di, where in this kind of planning bit would that one, would that bit fit in? I am guessing it would come in with the location, possibly. Right. But it's not something cool. I'm specifically involved in, so uh, Chris might have a better cool. one that. Yeah, I'll put it, I'll put it at that point for now and we can talk about it. Chris. Yeah, that'll do for now. I think it depends very much where the bus stop, um, the, the request or the desire for a bus stop comes from. If it's on a new development and it's passed over to, um, it, this will all be agreed more or less in the planning stages. Um, but there will always be, a um, uh, if, if it's a new stop on a, a pre-existing road or estate or whatever, it's not associated with a new development, there will always be a site meeting and consultation with the residents, the police and the bus operators in, present, in, in attendance. So it comes at that sort of either of those two stages there, yeah. Okay, so, th so it was meeting with residents, police and bus operators. Yeah, and usually the local um, politician there as well, district council, uh, level as, as yeah, however many people you want to stand on the side of the street, the more the merrier. Is, <laughs> many. So what they they go in, it's, this isn't just a kind of at the council meeting, we're putting in a new bus stop proposal. Everyone has to go and physically look at the spot. Um, Can I just double check as to why the police need to be involved or is that a... It's a safety thing. They, they safety. will judge on the absolute safety of it if they agree or disagree. I, I guess there are places where they're not always required, but generally we find that the local um, police uh, involvement is, is is a useful thing. I'll just put in local police. Um, cool. Di, d d does that kind of reflect your processes as well? I know processes are going to vary slightly between local authorities on, and also who's involved on things like this. Yeah, it's my understanding of our process. It's not something I actually do, but yes. <laughs> Fantastic. So at this point here, we've got a bus stop that, that bus operators could call at. So actually, I'm just going to go bus can stop at the stop, can service the stop, isn't it? Is the language we use, service the stop. Um, so I've then done a little bit of a moment of oops, water main 
broke, uh, road closed for weeks for repair. Um, not reflecting on something that happened in London well, uh, pre-pandemic, so heavens only knows when, um, that meant that I had a sort of a 20 to 15 to 20 minute bus journey, I had a 45 plus minute bus journey to do the same distance because of a broken water main um, blocking off most of Southwark. Um, so there's a water main closed. Um, it's the street is is down to half a lane. We can't service the bus stop. Can't service most of the bus stops around there. Um, repairs are finished and the bus stop is back in action. So that's kind of like a a middle a midish term suspension. It's not just closed for a couple of days. It's going to be closed for a couple of weeks because we've got to dig up massive amounts of the road and make it all safe and repair water mains. And then we finally reach the end of the bus stop's life. Um, no one uses the stop. <laughs> I found what I thought I possibly I, I know there was a bus stop that somebody mentioned that's in the middle of nowhere that has like one bus once a year or something like that that goes to it. Um, I tried to find a picture of that again, but I couldn't. So this is one of those bus stops that the place around it has just died, economic decline, all of those things. Nobody nobody uses the bus stop anymore. The bus operators are saying, look, we don't want to serve this bus stop anymore because we're literally not picking anyone up. We've got to route around. We've got to change the routes to go to this bus stop. And it's literally, it's not been used and they can produce the stats for that. And then finally, the very, very, very end of this life, of this um, bus stop's life, is HS2 comes through the village and they build a stonkingly great high speed rail on top of the bus stop. So the bus stop, the road, it's on, stops existing, the bus stop stops existing, and it is now a, a, a part of a high speed rail thing. So that is kind of the very end of its life. It can't, it can't physically exist anymore. Does this make sense, all of these stages? Is there anything that people feel that I might be missing? I think there's essentially a missing stock in between your burst water main and your repairs finished. In yes. You've got your temporary arrangements, well, which might be a temporary stop at a hitherto not previously used location. If it's a long-term repair, I mean, yeah, I don't know if we would consider weeks, but certainly if it was months, we would be needing to put in a nap time for the temporary location, just for the bus operator's uh, convenience. Um, right. So I that, would... so that, it, um, say for example, if it had to route round a side street, they could put a temporary stop on the side street. Yeah. Near yeah. location. I'll just put in. Um, so I'm just going to put in here just duplicate that move that one to there and just go reroute traffic through side street yeah or, or yeah or on the same street but around the corner type thing yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i was i was actually in my mind just imagining it as somewhere that where you couldn't see it so if you walked to the bus stop, you wouldn't be able to see where the temporary one was. And yeah. if you're driving to it, you wouldn't be able. It's not immediately obvious. It's not like some of the TFL ones where they say this bus stop is closed and literally a metre away is the temporary bus stop side. And there's part of me going, I don't quite get this, but now I understand it's got a lot to do with real time information and all the announcements and everything. Yes. Yeah. I've learned so much doing this. I've become such a bus nerd. <laughs> right. And the end of your life there. I, yeah. I, there's a potential discussion about what people do in this situation. So what we would do in this situation, the one no one uses this bus stop. I mean, you know it's not going to be used. I know it's not going to be used, but it's still physically there. So some... Joe Bloggs's bus company could come along and say, I'm going to run along this route and that's why I can use that bus stop. So what we would do, we would not take it off nap time. That's still an active stop because it's physically there. This, the, your last one, when you've got the rail line built on top of it, it's not physically there. And at that point, we would say, no, that's deleted, that's gone. But I'm not sure that everybody 
follows the same reasoning that we do here? Well, we, we take exactly the same approach in Kent that you do, um, but I do know that um, some of the client authorities that we do work for um, have asked us in the past to remove stops from Nap 10, despite the fact that there is still physically something yes. in the ground. Yes. Um, we've, we've advised them not to because it's a great way to lose track of your assets, but, um, but some, opera, um, some authorities do do, do that. Mm -hmm. Cool. Oh, that's really good. Thank yeah, you, Roger. I agree. I um, agree with the, with both. We have we have um, local authorities that if the, if there is a physical mark on the ground, the bus stop will still be there. Um, although some of the local authorities will take it out just just because it's not served. Cool, Chris. Sorry, and I'm just going to make a mark here whether or not so. Um, we'll just separate these two of um, the no one uses the stop. The stop is there are still some physical assets at the stop, not physically there. We've removed the physical assets from the stop. So I'm just going to make a, a quick distinction between those two that it will enable us in future conversations to remember the difference. But Chris, I really want to hear your thoughts. And sorry, I didn't see your hand for a few no, minutes. No, that's OK. It's um, being a little formal there. Um, I, I agree totally <laughs> with Diane Roger. We in Oxfordshire do not tend to delete stops and archive them unless specific, there are specific safety reasons or we're asked to, which is very rare. And the reason being is that consultation stage. Um, the point is, if you try to put in a new bus stop at a place where one previously existed and you've had new residents in um, and they will object and it, the consultation stage can be a total disaster. We've had that recently in a, one of our villages. Um, it takes months, years sometimes to actually get a bus stop approved. And generally, it has to be the, the member for transport actually are making an overarching decision on this, uh, which doesn't please anybody. However, if it's in NAPTAN, then you can point anybody who's moved into a house that their solicitors should have done a search for it and found that there was a bus stop at that site in the first place and so they should have been aware of it that's i think oh. our point there you've just found me a whole new okay. <laughs> um use case sorry my use nap tan when house purchase I, I don't know whether it happened, show. but it's certainly there is a bus stop. To it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, near property. Uh, that is really useful to know. And I'm just going to put that in a bright color so that I remember to chase it up because that's an entire use case. Trust me, I've been doing this since October last year, and that's the first time somebody's mentioned that kind of use case. But it's really obvious the moment that you say it. Um, right. So we've got these, we've got this life cycle, we've kind of got some agreement on what happens physically. And I'll just put a note here, um, if not careful, this can take years. Careful. Can I this jump back? Yes, Sorry, certainly, Roger. To, um, um, oops, the water main broke. Yep. Uh, because we used to tackle that in one of two ways. It depended on uh, on how long the um, outage was going to be for. Um, mm -hmm. If it was planned works um, that were going to take more than three weeks, then the um, the operator would have to submit a roadworks variation um, for the service, and that would um, that would deal with the problem right yeah. then and there. If it was short um, shorter term than that. We used to deal with it through the um, Travel Line Disruption Messaging Service, the ICS. Now, that no longer exists. Um, when it comes to yes, moving yes, stops it does. around you the just real don't have time. access to it. OK, well, right. That's... One at a time and just let me get. Yeah. So it was sorry. Um, sorry. I'm just trying to. I, no, 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 it's fine, Andy. I missed the word um, when you spoke over Roger. I, I missed the word. It was a travel line something service, and I didn't quite catch what you called it. Is it Siri RT? Is that the one? No, it was the, they called it the Incident Capture Service, the ICS. Capture Service. Cool. Um, so, and Andy, this still exists. It's just... Roger might not have access to it. Is that correct? It 
it does still exist, but uh, Travel Line Southeast sort of don't use the Diva system anymore, the MENT systems, so they don't have access to the to the ICS system anymore. Ah. Travel Line Southeast no longer has a website. Um, so the the only place our data appears now is um, travelline.info, um, which as, a, to, as of a couple of days ago, certainly did lack any sort of incident capture system. Ah. I know, I know it's one of those things that's on their list of aspirations, but they don't really have a roadmap to it. Yeah, all, you, you, all your data is still in our journey planner as well, but like you say, there is no ICS access to it. Yeah, exactly. Because Travel Line is Southeast, doesn't yeah. it? So, yeah. And that's um, where, if we um, move back to, where was it? Active, suspended and transferred. Yes. One of, one of the reasons stop availability. We don't, stop availability. One of the reasons we don't use this is because um, it's it's insufficient. A lot of the time, what you want to do is um, say, "Oh well, that stops moving around the corner for two weeks," and there's no way to do it in that time. Uh, there might be now, but this might be something where I think, and Tim's just going to put his hand up. This might be something where I think we might need a little bit almost a um i was going to suggest a nap 10 peer share session of setting up best practices of posing some of these problems and going how do we solve it in these different ways on these different softwares and coming up with what we agree might be the best way forward um but tim i think we could do would we be able to do transferred and put some dates around it or is that just me being overly unrealistic about what data can do no, you're quite right, Dr. J. So stop availability has dates associated with it. Um, and the whole concept of transferred is when you transfer, you have to say what the um, replacement ATCO code is. So you can say, you know, the activity at this bus stops moved to another one um, and set dates for that. But I'm not sure anybody really uses transferred at all. It's certainly not in the the NAPTAN outputs. Um, I know some people use it internally within their organisations if they've got software that supports it, though. Yeah, that's that's good to know, and that's also good to know that that time a little bit. Um, hi, Mark. Welcome to today. It's a small group. Um, I'll catch up in a moment. Let's go to Andy and then we'll pop to Mark and I'll share with you. I'll just quickly put on screen the bit.ly for getting onto the board. I think, Tim, isn't the transferred in Trans Exchange and not in Naptan where you can transfer a route to us from a stop from one stop to another? Not in because if it was in Naptan, it would affect every route that's tracked to that stop. Um, uh, and going back to the, sorry, go on. Yeah, no. So, so um, in um, from Naptan two point one, you've got stop availability um, and transferred. And the point is, is that the formal definition of it is stop is suspended from use and activity transferred to the stop indicated in the stop point ref supplied. Right. Okay. So that does allow on, somebody to move it without the need, in theory, for updated trans exchange, because otherwise you would have to recode every route that went past that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when I think going... this this is sounding like a, an, an interesting nutty one. Sorry, Andy, I didn't mean to cut you off there. Go, going back to the the status ones, I've just done an export of a of a stop I brought into life, uh, of planned with the dates and it doesn't appear in the export, and another one with archived and it doesn't appear in the export and with planned, uh, with the status of planned and it doesn't appear in the Naptan export. It just okay. deletes the stops all all together. So it, the, the planned is only used in the Diva system or the E for Journey Planner. Um, right. and archived so we only use 
the uh, active and deleted and deleted exports as inactive. OK, and deleted. Exports as an active, yes, exports as an active. Um, this might be something where we need to have a discussion with the software manufacturers so that we are holding the right things in the right place. But that's part of what we I wanted to look at today is just really understanding what we'd like to do, what constraints working with and kind of what little things that we might need to do. Uh, Mark, how are you? How are things going? Welcome. I, I do apologise about missing missing this. I thought it was this afternoon for some reason. Uh, so I've, granted I've missed whatever you've been going on. I've just walked in at the point where around this uh, stop availability, which funnily enough, I just tried using last week as a test after find, you know, finding it properly in the schema. Uh, We've been doing a lot of diversion work currently in our trans exchanges and it takes when we have a stop closed for whatever reason and it's taken us forever because when we have a stop that serves uh, we have like 23 bus stop 23 services serving a bus stop coming into the city centre it takes a hell of a lot of work to do a set of trans exchanges to take that stop out of it to update the journey planners and then a load of stop services to do it back in so I tried this stop availability uh, closed it. it it showed in the naptan upload that we did the next day but it doesn't seem that any journey planners actually use that uh, so it doesn't seem any end users are using that feature of the stop availability in it which yeah. would help us immensely if we could that's actually really good to know and thank you mark can you remind me of where you're which local authority it, you're from greater manchester tfgm oh, of course you are sorry <laughs> I was like, I, sh I know the name, yeah. I know the voice, and it'll, it'll it'll come to me eventually. Yeah. Okay, so that that's really really useful uh, because yeah. this is I'm one of the things the camera, that I want. <laughs> oh, cheers! <laughs> thank you. <laughs> one of the things that I was trying to um, I was I I want us to get to is kind of a clear understanding of the life cycle of a bus stop. Mm and its physical reality, and then how we reflect this in its digital double. So everything physical has a digital representation, and this will allow people to do some things a little bit more. I'm also aware that you can't do, uh, last time you told us, I believe, that you can't do archived in your systems. You've no. got to ask us to do archived. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, I think, it was something that John McCabe said we always had to, my boss who, who used to always say we had to ask uh, DFT. And then there was a while ago that they said they weren't doing it anymore, but we have, you know, we've got something like 30,000, no, maybe not that many, but we have a lot of 15,000 deleted stops that we want to archive just because it's padding out the whole Naptan data set that we uh, are never, go, never going to use again. We would love to figure out how to archive them for you, and that may very well be one of the things that we do when we can do it on new Naptan, because we're just not sure. We're trying not to touch current Naptan in any way at the yeah. moment. It is so fragile. We've got but, stops that just keep on appearing. Yeah. Is it not supposed to be where, like when we submit our Naptan data set of, like this one's an active one, this one's a deleted one, whatever, should we not be able to have we're going to make this one archived so that it uploads into Napton as a archive stop and then it ends up. So your system goes, OK, this one's archived. I'm going to take it out of this and shove it over there. Was that not the whole initial reasoning? I'm just trying because I really did delve uh, tooth and pick all the way through the whole Napton schema when I come on board on our Napton team. And I'm really trying to make our data completely exactly how the Naptan scheme is supposed to be, because it does all actually make sense. Um, so, yes, yes, um, we want to do that. I just, on current Naptan, nobody has actually, nobody that we can find inside DFT has actually run that 
that um, those stored procedures in recent memory. Yeah. It's been a good couple of years. And given the flakiness of some of the stored procedures at the moment, we're just trying not to run them. Um, yeah. And the flakiness, I think, I was trying to think who got impacted. We put in some new rail stops and they kept showing up on the ferry list as well. And right. we couldn't figure it out. And it, it causes all kinds of errors to have a NAPTAN file with more than one code in it. It's one of the errors that our system raises. So we then had to go through and figure out what was going wrong with current NAPTAN to fix new NAPTAN. I know that I know there was one problem about something we were trying to take something out of one thing and it didn't. There's yeah. trying to remove trying to remove a stop from a stop area. That doesn't work yeah. at your end. Yeah, there's there's a few things that we're trying to we're trying to fix up. And as soon as we're out of current nap ten and using new nap ten, which is what we talked about in that migration thing, the then a lot of these small fixes we can start to yeah. figure out ways of putting them in and that's why I'm kind of preloading some of this of going we need to figure out how to what archived means and give people the ability to archive and we can publish the archive stops so that centralized systems can say these NAPTAN codes will never exist again but yeah. that's presupposing what we do so yeah. taking a deep breath yeah yeah it's okay right yeah so I'm just playing catch up that's okay. We've we've caught up. So at this life cycle, so at the twinkle in a planner's eye, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go. I need another coffee. You'll be surprised. So I'm gonna give you like five minutes. It takes me about five to seven minutes to make a coffee, boil the jug, etc. I want you to kind of take some stickies and put in what you think. Just use whatever colours you want. Um, what do you think the, whether there should be an ACTO code or an APTAN code, at which point it should come in, what the stop availability should be called, what the modification of that stop point should be, and what the status of that stop point should be. Now, if somebody puts up something and you don't agree with it, that's fantastic because we're going to have a discussion about that. Um, does that make sense to everybody? So at each of these different kind of parts of the life cycle, um, Ignore the voting options. I'm not going to care about those. I was planning this for 60 people. Um, just have a think about what you would put this in as and let and let us know. And then this is going to cause some really, really interesting discussions. Does that make sense to everyone? OK, um, this has been really great. And I see you've put a lot of thought and comments in. So I'm just going to work my way across and then we'll have just put your hand up and we can have discussions at those points. I know there's so few of us just by putting hands up, it just means I um, I can see that that's going on. So at this twinkle in the planner's eye, we've got nothing in NAP10 at this stage until it's set on in stone. Um, stop a availability underused, but a valuable field and concert with status. I totally, totally agree on that. And I think that's something that's come out of this. Guidance to developers on what a stop should have. Too often we find not wide enough pavement or too close to bend, et cetera, include accessibility requirements, rose curb, busway markings, et cetera. Some national advice may help. I think that's really good. And I think that whole accessibility stuff that's coming through might be really useful. Are there any thoughts on, on about this twinkle in a planner's eye? Does everyone agree that at this point there's nothing in NAPTAN? It's just uh, an imagining. Roger. Um, yeah, getting back to that point on guidance to developers, um, one of the problems that we encounter is that very often the planning authority, being the district, will say, and it must have a bus stop. And then the developer will add a bus stop, and at no point is the highways authority, the county council, actually um, contacted. So there's no um, opportunity to actually enforce any of the standards so a lot of what goes in is uh, is absolute trash and has been installed illegally right so you end up um i'll just put in there uh trashy slash legal <clears throat> um and i take it uh, i'm dealing with the london context so i'm trying to change my perception of a bus stop because everything here is so standardized they must have a factory for it somewhere um 
so this is where you get those bus stops that are kind of it looks like a bus stop but really isn't it's not big enough it's not wide enough it's not in the right place it's not in the right place the on the road has, has sourced whatever is cheapest typically <clears throat> yeah we had one in barnsley not that long ago that was just a scaffolding pole stuck in the ground right that doesn't sound safe <laughs> I, I think this is very dependent on the planning authorities um, or the planning teams involved. Um, and I think this all goes down from the move from section 106, whereby the developers are forced to give money to the authority to do the work, where the, um, the, what the Uber bosses think now that it's cheaper for the county council to imply section 278 or something equivalent, whereby you just tell the um, uh, developer to actually produce the bus stop and if it isn't tightly enough um, contracted and it can be it isn't always and we've had a lot of bus stops just appearing out of nowhere and residents and bus operators asking us why aren't we servicing this bus stop just like Roger we know nothing about it absolutely nothing about it I'm just going to say from uh, agree a Manchester point of view that that can be quite contextual about all that because we have to go through all kinds of hoops to put a bus stop in and it's all dealt with the councils, uh, local residents, uh, the police authority and so on and all that and everyone has and all parties have to do site visits to put it in. So nothing's done on a whim in Greater Manchester. So this is this bit here is really dependent on the local authority. Yeah. Um, well, from our point of view, yeah. Roger. Yes. You had your hand up, or is that a oh, legacy sorry, hand? Oh, sorry, no, sorry, that's a legacy hand. Oh. I left it up by accident. <laughs> my bad. My bad. It's back. okay. I look up. I look up from taking the notes, and then because you're all being so good at talking one at a time, and then I see a hand up, and I'm like, oh, there must be another point that we want to move on to. So, um, okay. So that's all really good to know it's some of it's not quite about what goes in but it's allowing us to understand some of the linkages that need to happen um across other parts of dft for example the street manager planning and things like that um might need to link back a little bit more because that's one of the things we're thinking of um so then we've got the residence consultation operators need early input into naptan for route planning ESBR production. ESBR is uh, services, service Electronic routes. Electronic bus service registrations. Ah, uh, yes, of course. The Bodsy stuff. EBSR. Ah. EBSR, it should be. It's not strictly for BODS. I mean, they presume they use it for BODS. It's oh. for the traffic commissioners, yeah. for the registrations of their services. Yeah, I EBSR has been around for years. It's, yeah, I think it's great to submit to paper registration or an electronic. Yeah. yeah. Um, the the reason I say AKA into BODS is that's one of the um, triggers for a bus operator or a, or a bus service needing to be in BODS is the ESBR. That was that's more just a reminder for myself of that interlink moment of if we if BODs need to have it, at, if there's an ESBR at this point and there's not a NAPTAN stop that's going to create a little bit of attention. Um, so we've got it planned. It's just a blank one there. I'll take that away. Um, so now we've got a location that's determined. We're waiting on works and the bus operators have to agree to service it. Once location is known, should add to NAP10 so operators can use it. it. Needs to be enough in advance to allow registrations without using a non-NAP10 stop and trans exchange. That makes sense. Um, has to be a NAP10 by the stage. Our contractors rely on this for the location of works. So it's another use for NAP10 that I didn't know about. Um, so your contractors are using NAP10 to say this is where we need to go to put a bus stop in. That's right. Are they using a piece of data and NAPTAN is feeding it, a piece of software and NAPTAN is feeding it? Or would you just give them a list of here is the Eastings, Northings of this bus stop? Um, 
they get all that information from the NAPTAN data. They won't go to put a new bus stop in unless the data is in NAPTAN. It doesn't have to be accurate, but they need to know, um, you know, for the vinyls and everything else they say, but also for their computer records, their billing okay. system, they need to know the, de the details of the stop, the NAPTAN code, the ATCO code, things like that. Cool. That's 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 really good to know. Um, we might just double check with them what software they're using to make sure that that's another that's another consumer. They, they're using bespoke software. They will just do a download of the NAPTAN and then we will we're able to talk on the same hymn sheet. Basically, we will send them instructions via spreadsheet, email, whatever. But they then have to cross reference that to something they download from the NAPTAN database. So they'll download the XML or the CSV, something like that. Just to get the relevant details out. So, um, I've one of the things that I just want to ensure that we do is is hook in with them and let them know that NAPTAN's changing, and and get some um, liaison there just just to yeah. make sure yeah. that when we change formats or we we change how it's done, there it's not breaking their systems. Uh, so. That's really good to know. Uh, get rid only create and submit all at point of stop ready to be installed and ground. Yeah, sorry, Once I've all agreed. My, but... I've just moved that back oh. over there because I realised, yeah, we have to tell, we, we have our own team who go um, installing the plates on the pole. Contractors go out and put a pole in, but they're done by other planners, uh, <laughs> other whoever plans the bus stops in our department, in our company. They'll get the coordinates off them to go and actually install something but then we do all the information when we're ready to actually physically put a plate on the pole and then we'll submit the, all the information okay. then. so i'm just going to make a quick note bus stop can be stop installed in two phases hole and ground and then second phase slash team is signage And I know that every single local authority will do this slightly different, have breakdowns slightly different, have stuff that's internal and external. There's no need to standardise it apart from the digital double is the bit that I'm trying to figure out how we standardise. Um, now, there was this note here, I didn't see who it was from, running out of SMS codes for new stops, slightly sideways point. I actually think it's a really good point. And then Mark said, we were until we really delved through the criteria of what was required and found to minimum requirement was area code plus two own codes, not the seven, eight that kept thinking of opened a whole new avenue of codes for us. So, Di, is this your one? Yes. Are, are, you, are, you, are you running out of codes? Well, we shouldn't be, but we are. Um, back back in the day when this was when SMS and NAPTAN was first put together, you were given the option to download um, codes to use, and I downloaded more than I would ever need to use for each of my authorities. But when we've changed software systems and you know the passage of time. Mm -hmm. The majority of my spare ones have disappeared and I've got no idea what they were in order to just sort of manually add them. And my right. software supplier said that, that, yes, they'll add them for me, but I don't know what they are. Okay, so um, is that something that we could provide you just a little bit of assistance as a peer group of like how to how to make some of those SMS codes? Or, or Great for any is it? Well, the, also TFGM, when we got a new Napton tool supplier, we just get, we had to give them the criteria of, or they, they were understanding what criteria was needed to make an SMS code, having to have the different keys as if it was an old telephone key, different letters in sequence that as an old telephone keypad, not using the same key twice. But then they just looked at, all the SMS codes that we currently had. And it just kind of took it off for all the future potential ones. And then the, our NAPTAN editor just automatically populates us a, a new unique code ourselves. Anyway. Um, so, Di, 
let's um mark would you if we set up a, a conversation between you me and di just to look through because this i know that there's a whole pile of business rules about SMS codes yeah. that I haven't I haven't touched um, and I think it would be really good to understand the ones that are, are useful in practice the ones that can just yeah. be thrown away and also how that translates into what can go into software because I think that's a small but really really useful bit of knowledge yeah. sharing we can play with mm -hmm. yeah. is that okay could, for both of you yes, yeah I, I could probably if I really go find it back again I'll find the uh, contradicting information in different schemas in the different bumflets of parts of the whole naptan schema uh, so we yeah we were trying to figure out our limitations and there were some contradictions but we went with the one that gave us the most option <laughs> that's uh, mark i i have gone through 136 or whatever it was uh business rules so i hear you on the contradictions and i've just made a note i'll set up a meeting with the three of us um and we can just go through that and that will help us build maybe our first business rule which will be is my nap tank is my um sms code valid mm -hmm. which is a nice simple uh, business rule or or how do i get some more please yeah. please um yeah. generate me some codes and that's something that I think will be useful. Di, there's probably not just you struggling with this. There's probably more more people struggling with it. So we can certainly help out with a little bit of a doodad there. Thank you. No problems. It was a good little side sideways. Right, coming back to this. So so we've got something in the ground. We've installed it. One team's installed it. Another team's gone and put signage on it. However, we've done it at this point. It's physically there, it's digitally there, bus operators are using it, everything's all fine. So that's at this point here. Oh, half sec. Uh, if this takes too long, some operators will use the location as a customer practice stop in the meantime. Totally understand that. Um, that's why I made the scenario very, very specific because I know custom stops gets custom stops gets used a lot to cover a whole pile of vagaries within the system um, and trust me when, when we get to hail and ride I know there's a big deep dive there that is hail and ride is being used to cover a ton of stuff sometimes which isn't hail and ride entirely um, stop typically in the ground long before services arrive so we add the stop to nap 10 when, it, when it's physically installed so these are two kind of contradictory things and I think that might just be the lead time within that local authority is that am i reading that correctly roger um yes i think it probably boils down to um how stops are installed in different local authorities um, with us we're almost never putting in a new stop on an existing street um, we are usually putting in stops or rather stops are put in when developments occur um, so as a consequence, since we're almost never involved with installing those stops in developments, we're taken by surprise. Um, we are putting the stop in um, as the um, as the thing goes up, um, which means that the services won't be there because the houses aren't built. And the, the, uh, even if they are, the, um, the um, families haven't moved in. Um, so there's no service there yet. Um, if you are in the fortunate position of um, being able to um, have a bit more control over this, then um, our approach doesn't make as much sense. Totally gotcha. So um, in, sorry, my brain, uh, you're in Kent. Um, so you're getting, a, a, of course, you're getting lots of new developments. So you get a bit of a surprise that there's a new surprise. I've got a bus stop, um, whereas for other places, the bus stops are taking a lot longer to come in because there might be current roads there or this or it's being built on a current road um so there might be a bit more of a custom stop prior to there actually being something physical there hopefully i've summarized that about right yes i think that that's probably accurate die i saw you pop off mute for a second it is uh is is that the same for you are you uh um are you someone who's facing a lot of custom stops or are you facing a lot of um surprise bus stop surprise it's a bus stop uh, 
the occasional surprise bus stop. Um, we have a lot of custom stops. That's because it's uh, there's a lot of rural around here, and it you know, might be entrance to a yeah. farm type thing. So more rural, more custom stops. Tim, um, yeah, I I think it probably comes down to whether you've got operators that are expanding commercially. So um, if Trish from Nottinghamshire was was on, she would be able to point to um, Trent Barton and people like that saying we're going to run a new service um, into this area. And you know, it's an existing street that's been there hundreds of years and it's the first time that it's been served by a bus. And so they go, you know, we're going to run this and we're going to start it in 60 days. and bus stops take longer than that to get into the <laughs> ground and and that sort of thing so um i think it all depends on how commercially active operators are in an area that makes it that also helps me make a lot more sense of this as well just seeing seeing the different nuances roger do you have a point or is that a legacy hand from last time sorry legacy again no worries mark I'm just safe uh, in Manchester area, if uh, if services go down uh, new roads where we don't have any bus stops, um, they might an operator might register it as a hail and ride area because they want to stop down there where there's no physical stops. So we'll create a hail and ride nap time point, and then at any point, if any requests are made to what can we have some physical stops in ground, then we'll create some visit. You know, the whole thing will go through the process of trying to install physical stops. And then we'll create an app and point for a physical bus stop, physical mark stop, and then we'll get rid of the hail and ride stop. That's how it works around here. But uh, yeah, it's it's kind of a bit of an opening this because I, I didn't imagine, you know, around the rest of the country, bus stops pop up unaware of other authorities. <laughs> That's uh, yeah, it, that, that baffles me from only being in Manchester. Anyway, <laughs> and I think. I think this is this is part of a lot of what we're trying to do with NAP10. And there's, like being London-based, you, you have such a mental image of what a bus stop is. And this is why I always use an image from, um, from Buckinghamshire, because it's kind of like London, but not. And the furniture around the bus stop and things like that is so different um, that it, it makes you stop and think about what a bus stop is and breaks you out of that mold and one of the things that I think Naptan is struggling with is everyone's tried to push it into one specific mold assuming that everyone has the same kind of world that they do and this is why we're just trying to pull it apart a little bit and allow for flexibility but also get a lot of agreement on some of the key points. Um, so moving along Oops, water main has broken and road is impassable. It's going to be for a couple of weeks um, and we're going to go around a side road, um, which you can't. So you can't see one, but you can't see the temporary bus stop from the bus stop. Um, so emergency closures, burst water main cannot be incorporated into NAP 10, planned long term suspension of stops only. Gotcha. So in that sense, you're using the disruption tools to say this bus stop has moved. How long should works be taking place before a new temp stop is needed in NAP10? BOS doesn't allow non-NAP10 stops to be used for more than 60 days. So this is that temporary bus stop where it's um, around the corner is only for 60 days. So if the road, rep if repairing the water main is going to take like three months um, of rerouting traffic and things like that, um, which I've also noticed happens outside of London, um, then you'll go, people, everyone's going to struggle because um, BODS is going to kick back a warning. Is that how I'm understanding it? Um, so if an operator needs to do a diversion or um, needs a stop and it's not in that town, they can add that in the trans exchange, but the BODS quality checker, well, no, actually, it's a validation check to hard block. 
if you've got a non-NAPTAN stop in your route um, and the route profile is for more than 60 days, um, it's going to not be allowed to be submitted. Mm-hmm. So in these cases, this is where there needs to be a little bit more linkage between the bus operators and NAPTAN and that ability to do like a transferred stop, which if their software could pick it up, they could say, this is a transferred stop. This stop here is transferred over to this temporary stop here, and then it moves back and it becomes a lot more flexy. Yeah, it does. It's also when an operator running down a road for the first time and says they want to stop there, historically they'll have put something in for for registration purposes um or ebsr um and not necessarily told the authority or you know that sort of thing um so it's a it's a coordination between authorities and um and operators as much as anything i think um can i ask the um the local authority people here just to give me a sense and then i'll come to you mark just to give me a sense of what your relationship with your bus operators is like um coming from london i know that it's quite different in london to everywhere else so i'm just trying to get an understanding of that and a flavor of that uh it varies from excellent to never answers the phone responsible emails um so the so the excellent ones are consultative they come and tell you they need a stop you work together type thing um and the other ones are just we're, we're just going to do our own thing and hope that you figure out what we're doing yes i'll back that up yes I'm not going to ask who the excellent ones are and who the non-excellent ones are. Let's not keep a, a one to five rating scale on bus operators. But that actually might be a measure that we could start talking to BODs about, about how we bring in something there of valuing or or, or making, bus, uh, making it clear that bus operators and local authorities need to work a little bit together consultatively. In, in Manchester, we, you know, we've been getting on quite well with them all, actually. But I think in Manchester, it's been a long, it's been for a long term thing that anything to do with bus stops always has to come through TFTM anyway, about if stops are needed or whatever. And with the birth of Trans Exchange, really going into the journey planners and all operators using it, um, we're the team that they all deal with a lot to just try and improve their data quality and all the stops and stuff. Mm. And it makes our job easier when we receive their trans exchanges that actually have all the correct stops in and rather than us having to QA them every time. I, th I think I'd probably echo that for Kent. Um, although if we went back 10 or 12 years, the situation was different. Um, we had been in a situation, I think, where certain officers had been attempting to avoid any form of conflict with operators. Mm -hmm. So if an operator said you need to do this to NAPTAN, they just do it. But uh, of course, right. we have, I don't know how many operators Manchester has, but we have, uh, I think, 39 at the last count in Kent. So, mm -hmm. of course, you change something for one operator and you have just um, discommoded another one. Mm -hmm. um, so well, we had to have a few um, quite frank discussions with certain operators, but once the air was cleared, the um, relationship has improved dramatically. Um, now they understand that um, the, um, the, the the keepers of NAPTAN, essentially the people who uh, who operate the um, the bus stop network, um, that's the the highways authority. It's not something that the operators can simply tinker with. Um, so we, we haven't got any dreadful ones. We don't have ones that don't answer the phone. Uh, we have curious, some that are a lot better than others. Is, um, it the op is it the operators around there managing the nap time? Just curious. Sorry, in Kent? Yeah. Uh, no, no, local authority. We, we right. don't let the operators touch it um, on the grounds that 
any database needs to have one gatekeeper. That's oh, that's yeah, the yeah. only number of gatekeepers you can have. Any other number um, boils down to having no gatekeepers. <laughs> the other side of it is that I've been told this. Um, I've just accepted it. It's the fact that, of course, the bus stops are street signs, road signs, and the Highways Authority has ultimate decision on those. It isn't for a private individual to put them up without the local authorities. Um, permission if you like so it's yeah, always so remained with the highways authority that's another thing that we put a stop to um we'd had i think probably quite a convenient relationship for somebody allowing operators to um put flags up on um, existing roadside furniture like lighting columns um we, we simply don't allow that anymore uh, every, everything around manchester is all completely branded by transport for greater manchester anyways so, yeah, no. It's, just, it's been a, it's just learning here for me. This learning how it all works around everywhere else. Cool. No, that's that's, that's really really good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, it's also allowing me to understand. Um, so some of the just to give you a, a, not so much a heads up, more a, a a weird little thing that's been coming through is there's been um, conversation in bods about. Um, bus operators wanting to edit NAPTAN stops that are in the wrong place or have the wrong name and they're presenting a certain relationship but these bus operators are presenting a certain relationship towards the data so I've been presenting back uh, something similar to what you've said but it's really really good to get it all out and clear and positive around um, that relationship because that's going to allow us to build a, a model or a service design that, that that makes more sense because one of the things we would like to build eventually is a feedback loop where somebody can say actually this bus stop is slightly in the wrong place and have that looped back through whether it's a member of the public or a bus operator have that looped back through for commentary as to whether actually this bus stop is in the right place this is the only safe place to have it on this hill blah 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 and this is the name of it um i think it's mm, tim then mark yeah I mean, having been involved in quite a lot of conversations with um big and small operators as part of bod's work that i've been doing um in the same way that um, there's a mix of bus operators and their communication uh, abilities and, and that sort of thing, the feedback from operators is it, it's very dependent on on what local authority that we operate in, whether we even get a response um, or whether we get just told no or just do what you want and we'll catch up at some point later. Um, so, uh, you know, it, obviously, those that are engaged in in this naptan project are the ones that uh, that you know are awake and re will respond but um i get the feeling that probably a third of of authorities or so um there are problems um where you know operators want to make change and and contact and just can't get anywhere so um I, you know the, there's some work both ways Absolutely. And I'm never presenting this as just being one way or the mm. other. Um, I think we need to come up with a reasonable, some 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 reasonable mechanisms and some ways of um, allowing for that feedback, but also for DFT maybe being able to maintain some of that. Oh, apparently I've got bad network quality. Hopefully you can still all hear me. Mark, you've got some thoughts and then we'll move along. Sorry, trying to find on mute. Um, yeah, uh, I know we, uh, we, we, I built a good relationship up with a lot of the operators, especially when they started using transit exchange software. And then as they've got all the real time things kicking in, because um, we want to improve our data quality as much as possible, uh, we welcome any operator saying, oh, this stop, this bus stop is just slightly out somewhere. Because a, a lot of our bus stops are, you know, created back in some old 1980s legacy system so we're you know we're still trying to kind of catch up and maybe just improve some coordinates ever so slightly or the a bus stop might have been moved and our team hadn't been updated to just slightly update it or um, operators come through and say oh this 
bus stop named after this pub has been long closed. Oh, great, thank you. We'll rename it. So, yeah, we work both ways with operators and ourselves to try and improve it all around here. Fantastic. Um, so, just being aware, we've got 15 minutes left. Um, I'm going to do just a very quick skim over some of these last ones. Um, need to take account of the duration. Not all. No action required, temporary actions done inside ICS. How can this thing get transferred to BODs and other customer outputs? Depending on the situation, I've occasionally revised the grid reference of the affected stop to the new temporary location and move back afterwards. That's an interesting solution to it. Um, ability to transfer stop to another would be highly beneficial. Was not able to do this. Uh, need to take account of the duration of works of data build cycles when adding temp stops to NAPTAN. Overall, we perf prefer to avoid doing this as it simply clutters the database. Um, and I've just made a little note, real-time changes information. Allow and publish to end users the availability feature. If new NAPTAN can do hourly publications, we could do instantaneous, but we'll get to that. That will allow quicker updates to JPs. Um, oh, end users. Current NAPTAN only updates overnight, and some end users may only update update NAPTAN once a week or longer. In fact, it's much longer for some people. So what we are, one of the things that we will be looking at is building almost a real-time feed. So if you update something on your side, if you, and ideally, this is the ideal world that I would love to move to, is um, Andy makes a change and instantly that is fed through to NAPTAN without Andy having to do anything because it's just an API feed of, of this bus stop got moved and it comes across straight away. We can we process that information and spit it out and have it to, uh, so that a bus operator can take it into their system almost straight away. So if um, Omnibus was still here, we could essentially have um, Omnibus making the change, telling the central NAPTAM database, taking that change data in, at another site at a bus operator and that would happen within minutes probably about 10 to 15 minutes but within minutes so it wouldn't even need to be hourly it would be a just tell me the changes that have happened since i last updated you know or has there been something that's happened in the last few minutes so that's the sort of dream that we've got and the technology exists to do this it's a matter of getting the whole ecosystem to move towards thinking of something like that uh, repairs finished back in action. That's the end of it. Okay, so very quickly, bus operators could still use if Brave stays in NAPTAN. No one uses the stop. We would leave the stop in NAPTAN as a live stop. If stop is physically in the ground, is still active in NAPTAN and be able to use by any future services. Um, then over here, we've got, we mark stop as deleted, then after sufficient time and check the stop is no longer used by any operator, archive the stop. Delete stop from NAPTAN archive only if the road it is on disappeared. If a marked stop has been removed, then it is deleted. If it's custom hail and ride, it may still be usable NAPTAN point. Is there anything? And that to me seems to be the difference between deleted and archived. Deleted is a stop that's there, but nobody's act actively using. Whereas archived is very much a stop that just physically ain't there anymore and could not be used. So it's it's going to be quite different for a mark stop compared to a hail and, hail and ride or a custom stop. But if the road disappears, you just ain't never going to be able to stop there. Um, Andy and then Roger. Um, the archive stop is deleted from our local systems. So as soon as, it, as soon as we've made it archive, we can delete it from our local systems. So we won't be able to use it for tracking or anything like that anyway. But a deleted okay. stop, we could, but it will come up with a warning. So an archived, archived stop removed from local system. That's good to know. Uh, Roger. Um, really, just to say that if a, if a stop has been, a marked stop has been physically removed, um, we will simply mark it as deleted. There seems to be no need to archive it. Um, if we want to bring it back at a later date, we can. Um, and uh, we have a history in our local system to say, well, there was a stop there until such and such a year. 
Cool. Which is um, where th- we often get yep. challenged by people going, well, there has never, ever been a stop here. And I've lived here for 40 years. No, there was a stop there three years ago. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's yeah, the same for me. I put that blue box in there. Yeah, we'll just we'll just delete it as if it was there before and it's, it's now not there. Because there may be some point in the future down the line that uh, sometimes they actually go, oh, yeah, we want to put a new stop here. And I go, oh, well, there used to be a stop there. I can just reactivate that. So, so I think there's a slight difference here, and Mark, this came up from one of the ones I think um, John was talking about, where there were some bus stops, there was a bus station that had like a shopping mall or something built on top of it, so the bus station was knocked down, it no longer exists, it can never exist again, those stops are just never possible to bring back into action, because they are now within the midst of a shopping centre, um, and so those should be archived because they yes. cannot physically be resurrected. Whereas a deleted stop is a stop that could be, it might have lost its physical representation, but it could still come back because it's still possible to put a bus stop there. Whereas an archive stop is very much, there is no way that a bus could ever stop at the stop again. Yes. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Because we, we have plenty. Yeah, we have there was a crossover between our old legacy system and into our new one that it created a load of codes that we didn't didn't really want go how we wanted so they just ended up getting deleted again and we wanted to archive them because there were, there were so many stops that yeah we never physically ever needed we never used them they got created and deleted straight away but yeah they're, they're another lot that we want to archive they were created in yeah. error but yeah, uh, yeah, the yeah the old bus stations that have been flattened and built upon, or roads that again, like someone said before, have ceased existing. You know, road changes and new highways or whatever. So uh, mm-hmm. once more, I can't afford them ones. And I think that's partly why I wanted to just make sure that we we're in agreement of the differences between a mark stop or a custom stop becoming deleted, which is essentially no one's stopping at the stop. We've taken down all the physical signs. Um, people have stopped using it versus you could never use the stop again. And I think you could never use the stop again means that the ACTO code and the NAPTAN code has to be put into a state that is you can't reactivate this this code um and that's a little technical thing that i think we need to go and have a play with die um, if a cust- for us if a custom stop was would only be deleted if the operator has said i am not stopping there or the police have said this is not a, a safe place to stop because the speed of the roads changed or whatever um so it would only be deleted in in those circumstances um, otherwise, it'd be the same as something that's physically present, in which case it would, as long as it's physically present, then it remains as a, a live stop, an active stop. Now, here, I don't have any archive stops at all, um, just because my system, current, the system I currently use, doesn't have that ability to archive stops. If you had, if you had the ability to archive stops, are there any stops you would wish to archive? I think I would archive the oopsie stops because I've got a few of them. <laughs> just to get them out of the way because they yeah, just yeah. they just get yeah, they just noise, aren't they? They just get in the way. Yeah, and um, so what we kind of need to do is 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 I think that we need to take in those stops that are archived and possibly have a check of if you try to create a new stop or you try to create a code and it's on your archive list, you'll get a warning from us that this stop has an archived, is reusing an archive stop code and you need to give it a new code. And that only really needs to happen when it's a new stop, when you're creating it for the first time. That's just a little bit of how I'm seeing it inside my head at the moment of just yeah. understanding the relationships between those deleted stops deleted and inactive stops is letting a bus operator know that there's a there's a pos- there's the potentiality of of reusing this again but you would need to kind of let yeah. us know that you wish to yeah. use it because we might need to stick a pole back or do something like that you've you put 
your bottom box there was physically present stops are kept as deleted. No, physically present stops are kept as active. Ah, excellent. It's like complete opposite. Yeah. Um, Sorry. All they're only deleted in your um, shopping centre on top of the bus station type scenario right. where they can't come back. Now, is that partly because you don't have that archived version? Yes. Or is that, yes. So, um, uh, actually, I'll add it as a tag to there. Kept as active. Oop. <sighs> Trying to go too fast when don't have a, a archive. archive. Because you've only got one way of saying the stop no longer exists. There, there aren't two different ways of saying the stop is, is no longer exists. Um, so we've got about mm, two minutes left, five minutes left. What I'm going to do from all of this is put something together um, and uh, I'd, I'd like to put it up almost as like a little guidance note um, on the new site um, just to say this is how we are planning on reading this in the future. Um, let us know your thoughts, get in contact with me and we'll run some more public meetings like this and hopefully get a few more people coming along. Um, I know that it's been two hours of talking about the state of a bus stop, which sounds, well, it, it seems to be my life now. Um, but it's been really, really good to get all of your inputs and all of your ideas and also to start sharing some of that knowledge as well. Um, I'm going to skip past who needs to know what when, because we'll we'll come back to that when we get a little bit firmer on what this is. Um, what I'd like you to do is just take the last couple of minutes just to give us some feedback on how this has gone, because we've had two sessions now on archived and deleted stops. What's been good and useful about these? Are these actually, I know it's been quite lightly attended, but is this really good and useful? What's been frustrating about this? And what are the things that we've been missing? What are the things that, what's made us sad? Things that should be happening that aren't happening. Um, just take a couple of minutes and throw any thoughts in there. Um, but I also wanted to thank you all for your time and your attention. It's been really great, um, really great to get this kind of sharing community going around the intricacies of NAPTAN and how it's all thrown together and how this varies across the different local authorities is really important for us to understand. I was going to say, is it worth doing a lot of these smaller, smaller groups of maybe limiting the numbers to maybe five to 10 people, just as a thought? and doing a lot more of these smaller groups than doing and only having the bigger, much more open meetings when we're presenting things back. Would that work better? Because I know they, those big meetings can sometimes be quite chaotic and quite hard to corral as a facilitator. Yeah, I agree with you. I think there should, it should be when the decision has been made, it should be more of a public mass mm -hmm. meeting. Um, so, yes. Um, if so, if I kept this group, because I feel like you're fairly representative of some of the quite different styles, like Mark has very much a view of their metropolitan um, slightly a bit more TFLE like, but with with its nuances of um, branded bus stops and things like that. Um, Di and Roger seem to have some really good differences in how you're working with the different things. And Andy, you've got such a wealth of regions that you're looking after. Would you feel okay kind of keeping a little, being a little group, we'll include Tim as well, of course, um, and Chris, kind of covering across all these all these different ideas and just kind of deep diving into this would that be okay for me to set up fine by me yeah that's fine yeah. with me yeah i'm okay with that yeah that's okay. excellent yeah. because i i feel like you've got enough variety of experience that we're covering most of the different ways that things are happening um, across software and, and styles of local authorities. And we can really deep dive into some more around this and have a look at 
um, if you could do this in your systems and maybe even sharing, trying to set up a bus stop in the situation on your system and sharing screens and things like that. Um, Tim, I might set these up just as regular meetings and not record them from our systems. Yeah, fine. However you want to run them, that's fine. Cool. Um, so let me just have a quick look. Um, good discussion, good discussion. Small numbers help explain the consistency. Bods did not appear to have a good NAP10 from the early sessions, needed some instructions on how it works. Sort out NAP10 first and registrations and Bods would have been the sensible approach, rent over. Um, there is a wide discrepancy in the usage of the fields that are available and many that don't appear to be available. Yeah, and I think some of this is also how do we adapt very slightly like the CSV output so that we can put in things like stop availability and make people aware of these. Lack of maintaining documents in the past means lack of knowledge and different approaches. So totally agree. Would be nice if there was an option similar to transferred that could be used to temporarily move a stop. This would save having to create an app 10 point for temporary stops. That sounds really good. Transferred function would be valuable. That also sounds brilliant. Um, make sure there is a minimum requirement of um, yeah, and I think I, I found that transfer thing and I was like, oh, this is really useful, but I haven't been able to find anyone who's really been using it in anger. Um, and some of today was trying to understand if people's systems allowed it, um, but also if you've not taken those approaches that that if you've not done that historically, that can be really, really difficult. I said I, I, I tried it the other week. Um, just out of curiosity, but it. Uh, travel line and Google Maps and stuff, it, it didn't filter through to that. So, so just a feature that I think the because it's never really been used before that end users aren't using it. And this is part of um, what we're calling guidance. So we want to kind of start saying to people, hey, did you know that this was available? If if you start using this, because this is the problem with platforms is People won't start using it until it's produced, but people won't produce it until it's usable. And you've got this chicken egg problem. Um, we can start saying to people, look, we're going to start putting this in. It's going to be available in X amount of time. Please start. Please start thinking about how you're going to use this. Well, my understanding is currently available now to use. Just no one's using it. Um, I think, Mark, that might be a little bit of software because I'd like to make sure that it's available in the CSV download as well as in the XML download. And that's a small tweak and a change that we would need to be very public about. So, yeah, it might be available in your systems, um, but we need to make sure that we can actually push so, yeah, that information it, downstream. Sorry, yeah, it, it is available in the Natan download after I've uploaded it. That's, oh, excellent. Yeah. Yeah, it is available there. Um, it does come out in the XML and the CSV. It's just uh, end user systems aren't taking it into account. Um, Mark, I, just a I'm quick not question. Sure. Because... I'm not sure we got oh, sorry, it in Chris. the software that we used, to be perfectly honest. It certainly wasn't in the old system that we used. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean barring, the, it, uh, barring the initial creator, creator's tool, I can't think of what we were called. Anyway, the, the Naptan creators, if it is available, it is available to put into Naptan. Just, uh, yeah, I've tried it and no one, yeah, no journey planners took it into account. So I closed the stop. I made it completely inactive. But when I tried journey planning, even though it was in the Naptan download, um, yeah, the uh, journey planners would still journey plan from that stop. So I'm um, just going off someone Mark, who can do it anyway. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, Mark, I will just double check with you whether or not, because I know there's been a couple of changes from 
out of your system. Uh, as I said to John the other day, your 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 errors are like buses. You, you wait years for one, and suddenly about six come along at once. There's been a few errors from your system um, yeah. because. Because on new NAPTAN, we don't just validate against 2.1. We use whichever we validate against the schemas that you produce, and you're producing 2.4. Yeah. Um, so we're finding a few little tweaks. Let I, me know, know. I, know that, I know that last language uh, error that popped up was because we'd used that um, availability feature, and it appeared in that availability line. That was why it ah. just, that's why that one extra one had come out of the blue. Ah, that makes a lot of sense because I was going to say, can we just double check that it's not been kicking up the, a random error on our side, uh, which is more for my team to go and ha and double check the schemas we're validating against. Yeah, so we'd, um, we'd, we'd, we'd fixed all that language through all the data we had been putting first, but then because I'd used this uh, uh, availability feature for the first time, um, it. it Obviously, uh, our developer hadn't seen that before, so they'd it did miss that language feature off that field. So it had kicked up an, an error on your end, and all of a sudden, go, oh, yeah. right. So they fixed that again now. So, oh, good. I, I think I um, uh, I have to say I think we are doing we're a lot more um, careful about validations. We're a lot more careful about data quality, and we're very um. Our team has been very, very good on QA. Um, it's one of the things that we pride ourselves on because we do a lot of pair programming and a um, whole pile of testing practices. Um, and we do something called test-driven development, which means that there's a testing is kind of built into everything that we do. So it's good to know that we are spotting more things um, as they come out. Uh, as as changes are being made, it's good to spot other things. I think this is a really, really interesting one. Um, make sure there's a minimum requirement of functional software to be NAP10 compliant. This may be something that we have to look at in the future. Um, and I'd be really interesting in following this up later just to really understand. But we're five minutes over. Um, thank you all so much for your time and your inputs. I really appreciate it. Um, I know that it's been school holidays, so that's part of the reason for this quieter group. Well, smaller group, but you haven't been quiet, so I really appreciate that.